Hello Architects and welcome back to another RPG Architect tutorial. My name is Bert and today we're going to be going over some concepts. Uh, we're going to be diving into switches and variables. Now, if you've used any other game engine in the past, you're probably somewhat familiar with switches and variables. It's a pretty constant um, concept or, or um, feature, I don't know what you would want to call it, but they're You'll find stuff like this in basically any engine you use. Sometimes they're called, uh, they're, they're referred to differently, but you might hear them called booleans or floats or integers or strings or whatever. But in RPGA, we have switches and variables. And so to put it, I'll, I'll put it as, as burtly as I can, as simply as I can. Um, Switches, which in other engines are also known as booleans, uh, are basically true or false statements. It's either on or off. So here in my global switches, um, you know, no matter what you select, you can give it a name, and you have this little value checkbox, and it's either true or false, on or off, and that's it. It's just a true or false, on or off kind of deal, right? Um, pretty basic. Uh, variables, on the other hand, in RPGA, uh, you can store different things in it. So, for instance, there, there's something in programming languages called strings, and a string is basically a like a text name. It's um, so you'll see here in my example, I have hero name goes here, right? You can type in whatever you want. Um, and when you call this string, it will display hero names goes here, or whatever you have typed in, right? An integer is just a whole number. So I have here six, one, two, three, four, five, six, 150, 3,074, you know, whatever. An integer in programming language is just a whole number. And then we also have what are known as floats, and floats are not whole numbers. They are, they have like a decimal point. Does that make sense? So string is text, integer is a whole number, a float is a number with a decimal in it. And I'm pretty sure you could, you could still count if there was a 1.05, that's still considered a float. But for this example, I'm going to keep it 0 0.058845 for no real reason, all right? So just to display this, I've set up a couple little examples here. So this lovely lady in red, let's click on her. She will be displaying a message where she is referring to each of these. So she has global variable zero is a string, its value is, and then she calls the value. Variable one is an integer, its value is, and then she uses this text escape code to call the value. And then again, we do it with the float. She calls a value, and then she refers to global switch to zero is currently, text, text escape code for that is GS zero, right? So when I talk to her, all that will be displayed. This lovely lady over here, she is actually going to change things. So, uh, you see I have it set up first. She changes the string, she changes it to Gumby, she'll change the integer to 12, she'll change the float to 0.95, and she's going to turn the switch off. Currently it is set to on. If I just click here. You see, by default, it is set on. The value box is checked. She's going to turn it off. And then she's going to tell me all that. So I set it up here first so she, she gives you the right info. But much like the other variable lady, she just says, you know, it's a string, it's an integer float, and then gives you what each of the values are, OK? So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And then I'll, I'll list out some uh, practical applications for some of these, right? So let's talk to our redhead lady. There you go. Just like we expected, she says variable zero is a string, its value is, and here is the value, our string. Uh, here a name goes here, integer was six, our float value was 0 0.058845, okay? 
and global switch is currently true. I misspelled currently. Of course I did, why not? Right? So now let's come over here and talk to this lovely lady. They're both lovely ladies. So now she has set each of these variables and the switch to these values. Gumby, 12, 0.95, and false, okay? And so now if we come back over to her, she returns the values we have just changed them to, okay? So what's, what's some practical application for some of these? Obviously with the string, uh, this would be how you would set character names. Now we don't have, uh, that feature is currently not in RPGA at the, t at the uh, time of this video. It is planned, it is in the list of things to do, but when it gets entered, this would be the way to go about it. You enter your character's name, um, you save it to a variable, and then in dialog boxes, when you need to refer to said character, you just put in the text escape code uh, associated with that character's name. Make sense? Okay. An integer, a good um, one example I want to use, um, when I actually make a game <laughs> for myself, one thought I've had as doing is for like quest logging stuff, right? Okay, so I showed you guys, let me come over here. I showed you guys, I mean, this is using an integer, right? The door is locked. Uh, so right now I think the door, the door integer is set to zero. You check this, switches in the barrel. The integer is now set to one. And when it, if, you know, variable is set to one, plays the animation, doors open, and I could step in there and teleport to the next room, right? Another application you can do is, um, say you just have world events, like you want characters to react to things that are happening in the world, say, you know, the Deku tree is alive and then the Deku tree dies, you can have all the characters in the village uh, have their dialogue based upon a global variable. And so if the global variable is set to zero, for instance, every all the children are happy. Oh, the Deku tree is so great, blah, blah, blah. I love the Deku tree. Deku tree dies, you go through the dungeon, you can set world event variable. You can adjust its value, set it to one, for instance. And then you set up a dialogue box for all the children, a separate script to where they respond to that. And the condition for that is uh, variable one, you know, let me just click on her. Um, see, this is the script I'm pulling from. If I had a condition of global variable integer set to six, then she gives me this. And then if global variable integer or world event is set to seven, she would list out a new dialogue option. Does that make sense? So you can keep track of, you know, it could get, it could really um, balloon out into a lot of different dialogue options by doing that. But I think it's, you know, it's nice, nice touch for world building, right? Uh, have people respond to what's happening around them. And again, like I said, you can use it for quest items, for puzzles, uh, keeping track of if, um, you have so many uh, artifacts, you know, you visited so many dungeons and collected the artifacts. Does that make sense? So, that's what you can do with integer as well as many other examples I'm probably not thinking of. For float values, there are times when you are going to need to access a percentage. And so, for example, 0.95 in the uh, the back end of things, it's actually basically registering as that's basically registering as 95%. So, if you wanted to have a slider, like a volume slider, um, you could assign the volume to a variable and then give it a float value. So, as you move the slider to the left, it goes from 1 to 0.99 to 0.98 to 0.9 to 0.85, etc. You'd have 
your volume set to a percentage, right? Does that make sense? And other examples of that would be, oh, I don't know, actually. Um, I guess, yeah, sound effects. You could maybe do a brightness setting. I'm sure there's examples that you could do as far as game mechanics go. I'm mainly thinking of things uh, like options right now, but yeah, I mean, that's that should give you the idea of what to do there. And then again, global switch is basically just a true or false statement. So if you need, um, if you don't need a ton of variables going on, you just need a yes or no situation. Does player have this? Yes or no? If yes, then play this script. If no, then play this script. Then you can just use a switch for that, right? Um, and I guess one other thing to go over is the difference between global and local. So I didn't really plan on this, but uh, it just occurred to me I probably should address that. So obviously we have the global scripts. Um, you can get to up here or you can get to in the database there's global variables global switches you can just click on those and then access them but with each entity um, there are uh, local there's local data so you have local variables and local switches that are contained to that entity so if you needed something that didn't have to reference any other uh, any other data they didn't have to talk you know the entities didn't have to talk with each other you could probably just use get by with local data um, but the local switches and variables do not persist so when I was setting up this example of the door and the switch and stuff I'd used global um, global variables because I needed it to persist when I walked back through. If you if you need a puzzle that will reset, you can get by with glow or um, excuse me uh, with local data. But for things that need to persist across the game, across entities, what have you, uh, you would want to use global. Does that make sense? Okay, so I think that's really it. I know I didn't go all, you know, I didn't get all Bert crazy on you today, but I just wanted to explain those concepts. We've gotten a couple questions about them, and, and really those, those principles are at the core of a lot of programming languages. And I don't really know, I don't know any programming languages really, but I do know those principles and just just understanding those alone and then like conditional branches and statements will get you really, really far in, uh, in game design in general. Obviously there's more concepts that will help and the more you learn about any skill, the better. Um, but I hope that makes sense. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or in Discord if you need a more in-depth breakdown of switches and variables. But yeah, I think that's going to do it for me today. Um, be sure to like and subscribe. Um, if you missed the announcement, we now have memberships available on the channel. So you, if you click the join button down below, you can see all the uh, perks and benefits that you get from, from joining up there. And it, it's just a nice extra way to help support the channel and support the engine and the work that is being done here. And if you can't support right now, you know, no worries. We, we still appreciate you watching and, and all that you do. So it's okay. All right, I think that it's it for me. As always, you guys have been amazing. I have been Bert, and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.